time ever, we're going to see this logo. Ladies and gentlemen, we have reached the final episode of Agent Carter Season 1. We did it! Everyone thought I was going to give up after one episode, because after the first episode, um, I did the review on the first episode and the second episode. There was like two weeks different. So everyone was like, nah, he's done, he's done the first episode. He's, he's not going to go back to it. Here we are. We finished the first season. And now we're on to season two, which will be coming hopefully at some point in May. And, you know, <laughs> this episode, season finale, just what I wanted. Howard came back in this episode, so, you know, that, that just adds to it even more better. But the episode opens with that stupid Captain America radio show, which actually kind of hints at the events of the first Avenger. Because they kind of mention that he has to land a plane and stuff, so it kind of references, and there's another reference to Captain America later on in the episode. And we see the SSR, Daniel Thompson and Dan Peggy go into the auditorium where all these people died at the end of the last episode. Daniel actually goes in to the auditorium himself and he looks around for clues and he finds the gas canister. Accidentally sprays himself in the face. Nice one, Daniel. Sprays himself in the face and starts coughing. Thompson runs up to him. And then, of course, Daniel starts attacking him. Which, you know, finally, I love, I love seeing Thompson getting beat up. <laughs> and then they knock out Daniel. And we see Dottie and the scientist. The scientist dude does have a name, but I don't know it. So I'm just calling him the scientist dude. We see them driving along and they get pulled over by a cop. Who says they ran a red light and Dolly's like, oh my god, and like she's playing the innocent character. I'm so sorry. I, I didn't know I realized um, that I ran a red light. I'm so sorry, officer. And the officer goes back to his car, but then he hears about a car that was stolen. Matching the license plate. And as he turns around, there's Dolly holding the gun to his head. He will, like this officer will make an appearance later on in the episode, but I'll get to that when it comes to it. Daniel was then seen strapped to a bed in the SSR office and Peggy's just, Peggy just explains to him, oh you, you attacked Agent Thompson, you attacked me but you, you, you didn't have any control under it and then all the SSR agents obviously start you know addressing what this gas could be, are they looking to target anyone else and then Howard shows up and he's like the target is me. And all the, like, all the agents pull their gun on Howard and they're like, well, you, hands up. And Jarvis is just like, oh my god, yes, hands up in the air. Oh my god, oh my god, okay. So they start interrogating Howard, saying, oh, um, Chief Dooley is dead. Agent, um, I can't remember the guy's name, the other agent is dead. And Howard just is like, yeah, I know. It's all connected to the Battle of Furness. And he explains this whole backstory and they all come up with this plan to stage something for Howard that will draw in Leviathan. And we see Dottie and the scientist dude arrive at this hangar. And the guy is like, oh, this is a private airspace. And Dottie's like, I'll handle it, I'll handle it. She ends up knocking out this air pilot. But the scientist dude hears that Howard's back in New York, and he's like, oh no, plans are changing, we're going back to New York. So we see this press conference where Thompson is saying to everyone, oh, Howard's innocent, he's a hero, he's, you know, he's innocent. Peggy's obviously on watch, making sure, you know, let's draw in Leviathan, and then there's a gunshot, which causes everyone to panic, uh, it was obviously aimed at Howard, and Jarvis rushes Howard into his car and as the car drives away Jarvis sees the two actual drivers obviously dead and then we see the car and it's this police officer that pulled Dottie and the scientist dude over and he's like oh the scientist dude wants to have a chat with you. Peggy then finds the gun 
that was used and she goes this was this wasn't even aimed at Howard it was obviously to cause a diversion which it did and they look out the window to see yep okay Howard's and then they, they find out Howard's been taken and they find the car but Howard's gone Howard is now in this other car with Dottie and the scientist dude who's driving and Howard's like, I'm pretty sure I know you from somewhere. I was he talking to Dottie. And she's like, oh, you don't remember, do you? And we find out later in the episode that Howard tried to hook up with Dottie in this hangar. And Jarvis ends up telling the SSR agents, oh, you didn't confiscate every plane that he had. And we see them in, we see Howard in this. Uh, hangar with Dottie and the scientist dude and how it's just like can you just kill me I don't want anyone else you know to suffer or anything and the scientist dude's like no you I don't want you I don't want to kill you I want you to suffer just how I watch people suffer in the battle of Furness and of course he starts using the ring the focus focus your mind somewhere and we see him in, we see Stark in this like ice place and then this guy rushes over and goes, Sir, Mr. Stark, we found him. We found Captain America. And then Howard turns around and there's Peggy and she's like, yeah, he's here. And she's holding Cap's shield. So the plan is obviously for Howard to think he's going to go look for Cap. When the, the, the original thing is he's flying towards New York to release this gas set by Dottie and the scientist dude. Peggy, the SSR agents, Jarvis, they show up and they go, we might have to shoot him out of the sky. And Jarvis is like, I'm, I'll do it. It's what Mr. Stark would have wanted. So he gets suited up in the plane while Peggy tracks down Dottie and the scientist dude. She beats the piss out of Dottie while the scientist dude gets away and of course Peggy does what she does best and kicks Dottie out, Dottie out, out the window. So in the first season Peggy has tossed a guy out the window and now she's kicked Dottie out of the window. So Thompson and um, Thompson and Daniel tr try to track down the scientist dude while Peggy speaks on the microphone to Howard. So she's speaking through the transmitter and Howard's going, Peggy, hey, I found him, I found Steve, I found him, he's out there. And this whole scene just reminded me of the end of Captain America, the first Avenger, where Peggy's talking to Steve. He's like, I gotta put her down in the ice. Now come on, there's other ways, you, you don't need to do this. Steve's dead. Peggy's saying this to Howard and Howard's like, oh, I found him, he's out here. She tries to explain, oh, they want you to put this gas into the city of New York. And Howard's like, no, there's no one around me. Because obviously he only sees what the scientist dude implanted in his head. And then Jarvis shows up behind Howard. He's like, Miss Carter, tell me to take the shot. I'm going to do it. And Peggy's like, no, I need more time. And she eventually manages to talk Howard out of this and bring him back. Then Daniel finds the scientist dude and Thompson has actually been taken out by the scientist and of course he starts using the ring to go, you need to focus, you know, I know you like Miss Carter and, you know, Daniel is holding this gun and the scientist dude says, well, why don't you kill Agent Thompson here? Daniel gets right up at Agent Thompson, aims the gun, then turns his attention and just, boom, clocks the scientist dude on the head. And he's like, oh. was he saying something? He takes out a pair of earphones. Perfect, Daniel. Perfect. Pair of earphones saved the day. When Howard gets back, he's, he's talking to Jarvis and he's like, you were the one that was going to shoot me out of the air. And Howard and Jarvis is like, yeah, I thought that's what you would have wanted. He's like, no, no, that's not what I would have wanted at all. <laughs> the scientist dude is taken away in, the, in this car with like this um, blanket or something around his mouth so he can't talk. 
and the next, like the ending shots is so beautiful. So Peggy is obviously welcome back to the SSR. Everyone's clapping for her, shaking her hand, and then Daniel and Thompson say to her, you know, you're always welcome here. So it's not that she got her job back, but they're just kind of thankful for what she did. And, you know, she's always welcome there as an agent, I feel now. So they fully accepted her. Daniel then plucks up the courage and asks her for a drink, you know, and he's like, I'm going to go for a drink. And she's like, what now? It's only half nine in the morning. He's like, no, no, I mean later. And she's like, maybe some other time. So maybe in season two, they'll hook up. Then we get to see, um, I think I think her name was Aggie, the, the girl from the diner. They're in Howard Stark's mansion, and Jarvis says, oh, you can stay here as long as you like. Same with Agent Carter as well. And they have an emotional goodbye. Jarvis offers his services to Peggy down the line. And then he gives Peggy the blood of Steve Rogers because in the lab Howard had taken the thing because he didn't want it you know in the wrong hands but Jarvis gives it to Peggy here and Peggy ends up taking it to this bridge and emotionally like this was so sad Peggy ends up dipping the blood pouring out the blood into the water below and I actually, I'll admit, I cried. I'll admit, I cried at this because, you know, it's her emotional goodbye to Steve again for the second time since the first Captain America movie. And, oh my God. The closing shot is obviously Peggy standing on the bridge. But, because it's Marvel, there's a post credit scene. The scientist dude is seen in prison with this weird thing over his head to obviously stop him talking and then you hear a voice and who comes out of the shadows none other than mother fucking arlem zola the guy from the first captain america movie who worked along red skull oh my god i freaked out when i watched this i love arkham's Ar arkham zola and just seeing him here in the post credit scene, I hope he shows up in the second season. Because he's like, oh, I can help you get out of here. Instead of talking, you can write stuff. So that, that ladies and gentlemen, was the season finale of Agent Carter. And oh my god, I, I take it back, you know, to the first episode. And I was like, yeah. I'm horrible with names, and now, you know, I know the majority of the characters, Agent Carter, Jarvis, Chief Dooley, Agent Thompson, Daniel, Dottie, Howard, of course, and now, motherfucking Arlen Zola. Oh, I hope he shows up in season two. But guys, that's going to do it. This video has gone on long enough. Usually it's around, you know, 12, 11 minutes for these reviews because this is the final episode. I've got my thumbnail for season two ready to go in May. Hopefully that should be us, you know, video related because obviously we've got the Friendship Doctor on Friday. So unless something comes, like any trailers get dropped, like Peter Rabbit yesterday. Hopefully none of that happens, but hey, if it happens, it happens. I can't control it. So guys, for anyone who hasn't seen Agent Carter, I 100% recommend it. 100%. It's good. It's fantastic. It's watchable. That's what I'll say. It's watchable. So thank you guys for watching. And I will see you all later.